Hi, I'm Kevin DDR, and this is my submission for SGDQ 2017 for a score play demonstration of Battle Garega. Battle Garega is a shoot 'em up made by Rising uh, from 1996, and I guess it's a little similar to kind of. Um, you could say any of the kind of bullet hell games that came after it, but it's really quite different in a way. Um, you know, even though Cave said it was kind of part of their inspiration for Dodonpachi, uh, it plays very differently from that. And this game from start to finish has so much going on in it that comes into a good run. It's it's so hard to explain everything that's going on. And you might think, oh, it's just a shoot 'em up. There can't be that much. You just shoot things and bomb and dodge bullets. And I mean, that is true in a way, but scoring in this game is insane. Um, it also has to do a lot with a system called rank, which basically means that the more you power yourself up, um, the more you don't die, etc. Uh, the game has little internal value that goes up. Uh, and as it increases, the difficulty of the game increases. And the only thing that you can do to drop the rank once it's increased is to uh, get hit and lose a life, uh, which I'll be doing a few times in the run. Um, you get an extra life every 1 million points, and the goal is just to beat the game and get a good score. So without any further ado, I'm going to start the video, and this is going to be insane. Um, right... Right off the bat, the game is nuts. Um, which button you hit to select your ship with determines a characteristic about your ship. I use Gain, the highest scoring ship in the game. Uh, here I'm going to be destroying everything to get as many bomb fragments as I can get. Uh, when you pick up 40 bomb fragments, these little tiny bombs, uh, you get a full big bomb. And every time you use a big bomb, you know, it counts as one of the big bomb icons. And then if you have less than a full bomb, you can still use a partial bomb. Um, but it won't be as powerful or last as long. So, right from the start of the game, you'll also notice uh, these little medals. I actually miss one at the start, which is pretty funny because uh, that wouldn't fly in a... Uh, that wouldn't fly normally. But anyway, so I'm picking up as many bomb fragments as I can. Uh, the goal here is I'm going to actually pick up four of what are they called these option things, which are these little... Uh, fists that fire swords out of your ship which are pretty cool looking uh now they vastly increase the rank when you use them because yes of course that's how the game works uh you know making the game easier for yourself actually makes it harder so right off the start here destroying the tail of this uh plane using my options uh gives me fifty thousand points or something like that it's way more than if you normally kill it i'm gonna shoot along the side of the ship to damage the wings you can see they're getting getting kind of chipped up and uh that gives me a bunch of points as well next thing to do will be just dis to dismantle the ship fully um i'm gonna try and damage those propellers with my options but take them out with my shot because certain things in this game are worth more if you kill them with your shot or option uh these in this case are worth more if you kill them with your shot so you need to know exactly how much damage you can do to them with your option and then do the final blow to them with your shot so all the while dodging these uh, missiles that are firing at me. So now I'm going to try and damage the wings just a little more. Um, just to get some more points out of it. The bosses take a long time to uh, fully time out. So, you know, you have quite an opportunity for what we call milking. Which is basically doing something to just kind of, you know, chip away at the boss and not really damage it. But gain some points. So uh, you'll notice I lose both of my lives there. The reason for this is kind of twofold. One, because I need the bomb fragments that you get every time you die because it refills your bombs partially. The other is that I want to lose two of my options and lower the rank. So stage two, we're going to do the most famous trick in this game, which I will actually pause and explain very briefly because uh, it's, quite a, it's quite hard to take in. So... Here again, you see me building up the metal value. Every time you pick up a metal, uh, the value of the metal increases to the next value. And uh, it does that until you let a metal drop off the bottom of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go back just a second. Um, obviously, I can explain this, you know, as the run goes in the run. I'll mention it ahead of time. But just to start with. Uh, so what I'm about to do. And 517,000, by the way, is kind of an eh score. That's about the lowest end of where you can do the trick that I'm about to do. If your score is any lower, it just won't work. So you can see I've tried to max out my bomb fragments. 
I have quite a few here. Now, and there's the 800-point uh, medal. The medals go from 100, 200, 300, all the way to 1,000, and then 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, all the way to 10,000. And 10,000 is the maximum medal value. And medals account for a huge amount of your score in the game, so it's important that you never miss a medal. Um, so you can see this castle here. Uh, if you bomb the center of this castle, a bunch of flamingos will fly out of the castle. And if you bomb them, you get a ton of points. Um, but, you know, you only have three bombs and a partial bomb. And there's definitely time to lay four bombs out, you know, because you have the bomb that you hit the castle with and then you want to bomb three more times. But you don't have enough bombs. So what you can actually do is something really crazy where you just clip the edge of the castle with your bomb. And then as the bomb is damaging the flamingos that come out, your score is going up. So then you ram yourself into another ship to lose your last life which would normally cause you to game over. And the game thinks, oh, you game overed. Well, I'm going to spawn a bunch of items so that if you choose to continue, you know, your ship will be fully powered up. But you're going to get those items to spawn, but before the game actually ends, your score is going to cross the million point line and you'll get an extra life and you'll be back at, you know, zero lives. Um, and then you can keep playing. And of course, you'll pick up the full bomb item in addition to getting a half bomb for, um, you know, losing a life. So we'll see this maneuver pulled off right here. You can see I'm kind of baiting the ships there. Drop two bombs, get killed, and then the full bomb icon drops, and I keep bombing the flamingos. And it's important to lay three bombs on top of each other, which you actually need auto fire to do usually, unless you want to just rely on getting lucky. So if I destroy these tanks, now I drop my metal chain, so it's really important that I build my metal chain back up now. So if I destroy those tanks as they're running over the houses, um, you know, they spawn a metal each. And then a metal spawns every few, I think it's five or maybe ten enemy kills um, normally. So it alternates, you know, metal item, metal item uh, for flying enemies. So my goal is to get back to 10,000 medals before the start of the next stage uh, for reasons that you'll see. Basically, there's a huge cache of medals that spawns at the start of that stage. And you lose out on about 300,000 points if you... Uh, don't have maximum metal value there so here I'm just going to be trying to get back uh, some bomb fragments it's actually okay if I don't pick up any of these because as long as I kill myself before the next boss um, I'll have enough for the trick that you use to take this boss out in basically one hit so again here this is a really tricky part of the game for beginners to keep their metal value through um, you get extra medals for destroying the wings of these, and then if you destroy both wings and then the main uh, cockpit part, you get a third medal. So that can be nice, but it can also be tricky because if you're a newer player and you accidentally spawn one of the medals and then, you know, the bullets that they fire stop you from reaching it, you're totally hosed. So this boss is called Madball, and if you destroy his inner portions, well, really everything on him with a bomb, you actually get uh, a lot of extra points. And now you only get the points if those inner parts are exposed. So you can see when he expands his body like that. That's when you want to uh, bomb. Now, the trick is that at the very top of the screen where the text is, enemies are actually bulletproof. Uh, they can't get hit. So you have to wait for him to slide down the screen a little, which he does randomly. Uh, it doesn't always happen. And he it takes five attack cycles for him to start firing stuff that you can't really dodge. So, I got quite lucky, and I think... Oh, okay, so he did it on the fourth pattern there, I think. Uh, but either way, I bombed, killed all the exterior stuff, and now I'm trying to take out the uh, interior part. This is tricky, because you can see those little turrets uh, that he fires. They're the little rotating turrets. Um, you want to actually damage those without killing him to get some extra points, but I struggled with it in that run. So here now, uh, you better hope you have some bombs, because... Uh, in order to unveil these medals here, you need to, uh, bomb the, like, I don't know what you'd call it, train tracks, I guess, at the start of the stage. Uh, and it can be tricky, because, you know, your first bomb isn't going to get all of them, so then you need to kind of rush up the screen, grab some bomb fragments, and just constantly keep bombing. So, um, you may remember earlier I talked about getting an extra life every million points. <laughs> oh my god, that was crazy there. Um... This is going to be really important because, again, if I wasn't doing that, the game would make itself so difficult that it's 
basically completely unreasonable to clear. Um, so again, you can see I'm losing my lives back to zero. And then it's actually really, <laughs> to make it even crazier, the way it works is that how much a death lowers your rank by is determined by how many lives you actually have left. So the fewer lives you have left, the more impact a death has on your rank, which is great. Um, so it's kind of this weird tension where you're supposed to be playing the game on your last life pretty much the entire game, uh, which is very stressful. So now one, the only non score extra life in this game comes from this ship here, actually, or ship, whatever tank. Um, the goal is to let the tank keep scrolling up the screen all the way to the end of the stage and then fully, you know, dismantle him, kill every part of him and then blow him up at the end of the stage. And if you do that, once he stopped moving, you get an extra life or rather an extra life icon appears uh if you kill him earlier you just don't get it and that kind of sucks because again it's not so much that you need the extra life for survival it's that you need the extra life to uh you know give yourself an extra free hit so that you lose some more rank later on so although it does help with survival as well so you can see i'm damaging here damaging him here and this is uh important because i want to damage him but not enough so that you know he gets killed earlier just enough so that right here i'm gonna bomb him just for safety and uh i'll get an extra life you'll see it you actually won't see the icon um and then here this can be tricky because if you destroy these planes that are on the ground they spawn items the problem is that sometimes you can actually spawn the metals in a way so that you, that you can't pick them all up and if you don't pick them all up of course your host your metal chain is reset back to zero and uh that sucks so this next boss um i believe it's called earth crisis yes earth crisis is uh, somewhat straightforward um again it's another kind of one of those pervasive themes in this game of you know taking every part of the boss killing it separately rather than going in for the quick kill you know to get extra score so here i'm going to use a kind of interesting technique i'm going to take out these uh two sets of things that fire at you on the left and right and i'm going to leave this middle turret that's firing at me on screen the reason why is because the boss won't actually um he won't spawn his next form until i take out that middle turret so i can kind of stall him in this phase and uh attack these two missile launchers on the side when you destroy the missile launcher this little inner thing spawns and you kill that for fifty thousand as well so <laughs> now a real real pro like the world record holder the strategy here is actually to once you've destroyed those just sit up on top of that uh middle turret and if you're too close to it it won't fire at you and then you can just keep spamming the top of the screen and kind of stall the boss for another minute or two but uh that vastly increases your rank and makes the game extremely extremely hard to clear so you'll see me not do that here and the score gain from it is only maybe three hundred thousand, i think so it's really unless you're again going kind of for a world record level score you know it's not really uh worthwhile so now we're coming into stage four here uh this stage has some jamming music that you can't hear because i turned off the game audio for this um for this commentary video so again, you know, we've got the metal chain going pretty well. I've done a good job of rank management. Um, the way you can tell how high the rank is, is you'll notice that when an uh, uh, item spawns or a metal spawns, it falls down the screen. If your rank is high, uh, the metals and stuff will fall faster down the screen than if your rank is low. That's the only visible indicator. Um, there's a couple other kind of benchmarks you can use to measure it, but it's not like the game just tells you um, what your rank is at any point, so... Again, pretty much destroying everything I can to get some more medals. Um, leaving this tank alive or not doesn't really matter. Um, if you shoot off all of his tracks before killing him, you'll get a full bomb icon instead of just fragments. But that doesn't really matter here since I'm going to bomb away all my bombs to expose these medals here. So again, you know, if you dropped your metal chain by this point, you would be losing out on about... 500,000 or more points on this stage so um and to to add you know uh uh insult to injury if you drop your medals uh picking up high value medals actually doesn't do anything to impact your rank but picking up the lowest four medal values 100 through 400 vastly increases your rank so if you drop your chain and try and restart it but aren't successful uh you're gonna hose yourself for later on in the game 
So here I'm going to try and take off all the treads of the uh, tanks before killing them to reveal the full bombs. Uh, you'll see the reason for this shortly. And I think I don't... Yeah, there's more metals to expose there, but you can bomb these rails to expose 10 metals each. And it's kind of tricky to do this without dropping your chain. So I skipped the first one, take the second one, and now I dropped a metal. But here's the trick. Every time you collect a metal, the value is set to that metal plus one. So even if you drop your metal chain and it gets reset to 100, if you still have a 10,000 on the screen, you pick it up and you can kind of what we call a metal resurrection, where you, you know, your value gets reset to that value. Um, so now this boss is, uh, I think it's called Satanic Surfer. Yes, um, it's quite hard. But he uh, has some interesting scoring techniques. So you'll see I dropped a bomb immediately. I'm trying to take out these two little green hatches in the middle of the ship. Um, doing that causes these little drone torpedo things to spawn. And each of those are worth 5,000 when you kill them. They're worth quite a bit. And so now I'm going to try and just dismantle the rest of the, uh, of the boss. Just to get some points out of it. And also because if you don't take care of these things that fire at you in a few different forms. Um, if you let too much stuff show up on the screen at once, you can kind of put yourself in an untenable situation where you're almost guaranteed to die. So anyway, took the boss out with a relatively quick kill. He times out really quickly, so it's hard to get the full value from him um, unless you're really on top of your game with a good plan. So the start of this stage is just a nice little what we call popcorn enemy rush. They kind of don't really do anything. They barely even fire at you, but it's a good way to get a little metal value. Now, bombing the propellers of these um, of these kind of huge... Well, I, I call this a train stage because a lot of shoot 'em ups have stages like this, but with trains instead of uh, flying ships. You know, bombing the propellers of them gives you some extra points. Uh, and, you know, you can't destroy the propellers otherwise. So you're going to bomb the tail and then bomb the front. Um, now... Depending on your rank, the tail and front will take either two or three bomb fragments to destroy. Uh, it doesn't really matter how much it takes, but you just need to be wary of that. Because every time you bomb, you know, you're using your last bomb. And then you need to immediately pick up three fragments to spawn, uh, or rather to use for the uh, next bomb. So, bomb, pick up three fragments, you know, pick up the metals, bomb, pick up three fragments, bomb. You know, it's... Uh, it's it's really, really intense, and uh, it's actually quite hard to not accidentally pick up items during this section of the game. You'll notice that I've kept my options down to two options instead of four, which is the maximum you can have uh, for most of the game until now. But at this point, I pick up a third one, and then immediately die, which, uh, again, that wasn't intentional, uh, unlike a lot of the other deaths in this run, but... Uh, it turns out to not really be a bad thing because I'm about to get another extend and uh, extend being an extra life that is. And, you know, the extend will impact or rather the death will impact my life more because I have only one life instead of two. So it actually all works out quite well. And in a way, that's what I love about this game when you're playing it is, you know, there's a real sense of a. Uh, dynamic gameplay where you just have to kind of like oh god this just happened i need to think of my game plan you know um there's kind of a little bit of uh impro improvisation going on there so now at the end of this stage there's a boss rush um where you basically fight the bosses from earlier in the game again but in their upgraded forms um so this is nose laughing mark ii um which is just a much stronger version of the boss from the first stage now he may not look that different yet uh, but you're about to see the really, really tricky part of this guy. Um, once I destroy a couple more parts, his missile launchers will pop out. But unlike the earlier ones, they don't just fire occasionally. They continuously fire at you. And the only time you can get him to stop firing at you is by moving. If you just stay in one spot, he won't take breaks like he is right now. He'll actually just continuously fire at you until you die. Um, so I have to keep kind of moving around the screen to stop him from killing me. And now those bullets at the end of the boss actually fire faster depending on how many parts of him you destroyed up until that point. So, uh, you know, again, the better you score, the harder the game gets, basically. Now, here I got very lucky, and Madball Mark II just decided to 
scroll down the screen immediately. So I was able to bomb him for full value. Um, now again, I'm trying to take out the inner turrets with my uh, shot instead of my uh, options, but it's really hard to do. Uh, it doesn't always work out. You can kind of get unlucky and not have much you can do. Now we uh, face the big carrier here where it has tons and tons of little parts that you want to bomb to maximize your score. So, you know, I'm bombing the tail, I'm bombing the wings, I'm bomb bombing the propellers. Um, again, just a lot of optional things that you can do to increase your score. Those three on the right are quite tricky to get because they don't open until you get further away from them. So you can actually just cause them to never open and lose out on the points as a result. So again, bombing on the left, bombing on the right, um, bombing in the center, I believe. Oh no, okay, I actually save bombs here a little bit. Um, this is one of the few places in the game where the game actually slows down because the CPU is overloaded. Um, so uh, it makes it a little easier, but it's still it's quite tricky. Um, again, going to take that out on the left. Now these expose the two option icons. Uh, I don't really want any more options, but, you know, I have to pick up one, uh, because you can actually get special option formations, which is that if you let option items go and then pick up one, like after dropping a certain amount, you'll get a special option formation that, uh, you can't get by normally hitting the C button, which is how you change your formation. So again, kill the boss, bomb his shrapnel that's about to come out at the end. Um, for extra points. You'll notice I let five bomb icons go. The reason I did that is exactly uh, what I was talking about earlier, which was to create a special option formation. If you let five bomb fragments fall off screen and then pick up an option, you get homing options, which I luckily got right there off of the drone that spawns. Um, this is not important for this part in the game, but it becomes important on the next stage, and you'll see why fairly soon. Uh, now we're about to pick up and extend here. And uh, that big shot icon that I just picked up actually maxes out my shot power. So we're basically at full power now, which is, you know, not good earlier on in the game because it greatly increases your rank. Um, but towards the end of the game, you sort of just need it. Uh, there's kind of not really another way to deal with it. So, you know, it's a bit of a risk reward thing, you know, it's like, yeah, oh, and uh, I made a nice little mistake there. The second time he fires his, uh, you know, thrusters at you, he actually slides across the screen to try and kill you. And uh, I forgot that he does that and uh, slipped right in between them, which is viable, but you know, you shouldn't do that. So anyway, moving on, my score is at 9 million. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this run at this point. Uh, at the time, my record was 8.9 million. You heard me right, 8.9 million. Uh, the reason for that is once you hit 10 million in this game, your score rolls over into letters because uh, reasons. So now this start of this stage six is really, really hard to keep your metal chain through. Um, so many things spawn metals. These gun blimps or whatever, they're side spawn metals. Uh, and the only way to really stop them from spawning metals is to kill them without shooting at the sides first, which I kind of do, but I also just, you know, um, having the homing options helps a little because you don't have to actually like be where the enemy that you're killing is. So that lets you kind of maneuver around a little more safely to pick up the metals. Now it, it's really quite rare that I make it this far with the metal chain intact, um, and in a way, it's not so bad if you drop the metal chain before stage six, because you're only looking at like, I don't know, like 400,000 lost. You know, it's not like millions or anything, but um, it does suck to lose your metal chain. And even worse, a lot of metals spawn during this stage. So if you drop your metal chain, you have to be very careful to avoid picking them up at low value. Now, this turret wall is one of the most infamous parts in this game. Um, if you don't have a plan going into it again, it can be just totally unmanageable. But having homing options is really nice because it lets you slide around the bottom of the screen and dodging bullets and all that stuff uh, while your homing options are doing all the dirty work. So now we, uh, if you haven't got your homing options yet, you can actually leave five bomb fragments on the screen there in a last ditch attempt to get your homing options back. But that can be dubious. Uh, it doesn't always work out. But, you know, it's worth a shot at that point because it makes this part of the stage just so much easier. So, 
if you're not if you don't have a metal chain at this point what you're going to be wanting to do is just kind of park yourself over one of the enemy like tank spawner things and then the enemies won't shoot at you while you're directly over it so you only have to worry about the other side but you don't really have to worry about it because your homing options are going to take them out so uh unfortunately i dropped the metal chain there which kind of sucks because you know the hard part is the start of the stage for keeping the metal chain running not here um here it's mostly just difficult to survive so nonetheless i'm undeterred i'm about to get another extra life at 10 million um you can bomb those guys for 50,000 points each but i wouldn't do it with this ship the reason why will become obvious later you're actually trying to save all your bombs at this point for blackheart mark ii the uh, second to final boss in this game so he has an attack that you can bomb for lots of points so really you don't want to use your bombs here as a result unless you have enough lives to suicide away that you can max out your bomb stock that way which uh can can work but again that makes the game harder to clear because that means that you had more lives in stock which means that your suicides weren't worth as much and you also didn't do as many of them so it all balances itself out in an interesting way i think i bombed no no i don't bomb this one um I actually probably could have bombed him because I'm going to max out my bomb stock anyway. You can have four bombs plus a full set of fragments. Uh, that's the maximum. And now this game punishes you too. Whenever you're maxed out with your shot power up or uh, your options, you know, your count of options or your bomb count, if you pick up any of those items when you're already at, you know, max value, those massively increase your rank. So uh, don't do that. <laughs> Um, I make that mistake sometimes at the end of this stage and that sucks. So, so here you can see we've hit a million, uh, now we're closing in on the boss of stage six. There's seven stages in this game. Stage six, I mean, stage seven barely even counts as a stage because it's mostly just a short starting period and then two bosses. But stage six is a real, I know for most players and definitely for myself as well. Um, once you get to stage six, that's a real kind of roadblock in this game. It's super hard to stay alive during the tank rushes earlier on and you know most people just kind of freak out at that point and if your rank is high too uh that becomes very very hard so this is kind of interesting these turrets you can see barely on the left and right side of the screen they actually won't fire at you as long as they're off screen so i just kind of dart about in the middle of the screen so that they never spawn now i don't do a great job of it um because it's quite hard to never have them spawn at all um but i managed to mostly stop them from firing at me now i just drop a bomb quickly there to uh, skip that phase of this boss and now this is an interesting kind of long milking section the goal here is you can see these arms um on junkie monkey that's what this boss's name is anyway um his arms just kind of spawn and like you know, they, they take these turrets from the core and place them out on the stage to shoot at you. It's a really cool boss design, honestly. Um, the main scoring mechanic here is that you want to keep destroying the arms because they'll respawn as long as the boss is alive. So you sort of want to avoid damaging the core while shooting the arms and then taking out the turrets as well. Um, the turrets are worth some points, but more importantly, you know, if you let too many build up on the screen, they'll start firing at you and nothing else on this boss that it fires is aimed at you it's just kind of like um it's not targeted it just fires across the screen but those bullets on the turrets are aimed at you so they can snipe you out of nowhere which kind of sucks so anyway i got a bunch bunch of points out of that boss and then you know a little bit before he was about to time out um took the kill so stage seven is um it's a bit of a rush you know it's it's kind of just a couple turret walls and then you face the two hardest bosses in the game back to back um it kind of provides you with a little bit of an opportunity to power up in case you hadn't already powered up and of course some more bomb fragments um there's a couple neat tricks at this point in the game uh what i'm actually doing here i don't remember if i performed the technique correctly in this run what i was trying to do is that you'll notice that this screen will just stall and will never advance until you kill everything um that's not quite true though however if you wait long enough the screen will time out but that guy will stay you know just kind of opening and closing because i'm on top of him so you'll see the stage advances even though i didn't kill everything on screen now what happens here is that this part of the stage will actually not advance um until i kill that thing at the bottom so you can actually spend a lot of time there 
um, you know, just milking for points and medals and items. Uh, of course, I got quite nervous at this point because I was just about to hit my personal best. I knew that if I made it, you know, to the final boss, I would have a new personal best. So I didn't go for that scoring technique there. Um, now, two lives extra at this point. It's a little nerve wracking. Uh, I would kind of hope to have three in stock. I know I'm going to get one more because I'm going to easily get 500,000 points from the uh, second to last boss, Blackheart Mark II. But uh, it's still, I don't know, it's tight. I mean, <laughs> these two bosses are very, very hard. So here I'm going to stay on the left. Now, you might remember the stage five final boss, Blackheart, um, where I got my homing options originally, actually. Uh, I'm going to... This is his phase two or mark two, uh, where he fires a lot of different patterns at you that some are deadly and some are worth a lot of points. I hope for him to spawn grenades. Uh, the grenades that he fires at you are worth an obscene amount of points if you shoot them with your uh, options, and they're worth way more than that if you bomb them. So Instead, he's firing drones at me. Drones are also worth some good points, but they're not worth as much as the... Uh, Grenades. So there he spawns grenades. I bomb, get a couple hundred thousand points out of it. And now I actually don't want him to go into his next phase. I want him to keep using that grenade attack. So I'm just going to dodge his patterns and not do anything. So you'll see he's kind of not doing anything there. And then again, bomb. And that puts me over B million. So at this point, things are looking okay. Now, actually killing this boss is extremely hard. Uh, you can see this pattern is just brutal. Uh, and now this next pattern, I actually messed up there and placed myself in a spot where it's almost impossible to survive. Uh, so I just bombed my way out of it because I still had some bombs remaining. But this, you know, lowers my maximum scoring potential as a result because I don't get to bomb any more grenade patterns. So, uh... Almost died there, and uh, you can see things are getting a little dubious. I just lost my uh, second to last life, and now I'm coming into the last boss of the game, um, Glow Squid. With zero lives, it's not looking good, uh, but this is my highest score to date. Uh, I had an 8.9 million where I cleared the game, so I thought, oh, you know, like, at this point, I wasn't really... I wasn't really too nervous because I knew I had a new personal best no matter what. So I was shooting for the clear. Um, you can see that my shot just became way more dense. That's because if you mash the A button really fast, you can actually increase your auto fire speed. Uh, but doing so multiplies the rate at which your rank increases throughout the game. So you don't want to do it earlier on, but at the end of the game, it has basically no effect. So I do it here in a last ditch attempt to survive. And uh, unfortunately, right around here... I uh, think I take a hit. Yep, right there. So um, no spoilers, I guess, if we get accepted. Hopefully you'll see the final form of this boss. But uh, that was a new personal best and a very good run. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. That's a jam-packed description of Battle Garega. Um, I don't know if it's possible to slam more words into 30 minutes than I just did. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, huh, a nice little bug there. You can see that uh, instead of getting a letter next to, uh, you know, as the first digit of my score, I get punctuation marks. And the reason why is because the uh, high score screen actually uses a different font than the main game. So instead of rolling from numbers into letters, it rolls from numbers into punctuation. So, oh, wow. I think I uh, just got a bit on Twitch as I'm streaming this. Anyway, uh, God, that was intense. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. I'm going to sign off uh, because I need to submit this video really quickly. So uh, have a good one. Bye.